Kim and we are. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> hey, y'all. We are, uh, today is going to be a day of inspiration, a day of hope, a day of fellowship, and a day of saying some goodbyes. And Ella J has had to say goodbye to a wonderful, wonderful man, um, businessman, friend of the community. Bob Thomas went to be with the Lord and um, there is no doubt where he went and, and what a celebrating day it will be. Your dear friend, Dr. Jerry Goff, recently went to be with the Lord. What a day of celebration it was. Tell me a little bit about his funeral. What was that like? Well, it was, it was, in, um, it was in Marietta. It was at um, Macklin Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And it, was, it wasn't a funeral. It was a celebration. Mm -hmm. It was a homecoming, homegoing celebration. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was um, a who's who of gospel music was there, and um, just some wonderful tributes. And and <clears throat> we um, uh, on the uh, up on the in the front, they had his his trumpet that he would always play when he came in. Yeah. And um, but uh, it was just so moving. And he had <clears throat> oh this <clears throat> he had left the Bible um, uh, for her. And uh, when the Bible was presented, there was a, there was a note inside it that said to be opened after he had he had. Uh, and yeah, well, after he passed, it was wow. like a letter to Jan, you okay. know, and so she got to read it after his passing, and everybody is with a dry eye in the house I'm over sure. that. Yeah. But um, and then um, the interment was in Nashville, and there's over 100 people at the graveside service then, and so. But he was just so well loved. He was just a well known um, MC at the quartet convention, and and of course the cruises, and of course up here. At Hiawassee, some mm -hmm, 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry and Jan Goff were there. That last day he preached <coughs> there was really hard for everybody <coughs> because it was an event that people year after year after mm -hmm. year but they went knew. to hear him deliver the message. Mm -hmm. And so when they said this is his final year, it was like, oh no, don't tell us this is happening. But it And it was time. It was time. Yes, Wasn't it yes. his 80th year in being, he was 80 years old that year. And he just That's said, right. I've got to slow down. Right. Mm -hmm. And they just slowed their schedule down, and uh, but um, faithful to the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just uh, um, just an inspiration. I'd, I'd talk to him often. I'd call him, or he'd call me, and uh, he'd always want to answer the phone and say, "Hello, old preacher." <laughs> that, 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 <coughs> that big that, that tone, you know, and uh, he'd always ask me, you know, how how's how's Alicia, and how's the church, and how's 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 Southern Gospel Music Association. You know, he yeah, was he was yeah. one of the co-founders of the SGMA wow. and president, president emeritus, we, we like to refer to him as, as one of the founding members and, and uh, uh, one of their presidents and just loved gospel music and it was loved by all that was in gospel music. And well, I'm going to throw something at y'all. Guess where I went Saturday? Where's that? Where's I went that? to <laughs> the home of gospel music. I went to Vestal Goodman's home oh, okay. in Fife, Fife, Alabama. Alabama. Fife, Alabama. <laughs> Fife, That's Alabama. Right. How about that? And, and we went to a lot of different places in Alabama. And then Freddie said, what was your favorite part of the trip? And I said, Vestal's. And he said, why? I said, because I remember being a 14-year-old kid and singing Jubilee, coming on with God Walks the Dark Hills that <laughs> Sunday morning, and I jumped up, and I ran in there, and I said, who is that lady? And she had that big old hair, <laughs> and I had that big old hair back then. And, and it just, oh my goodness, to see, and there was an old Lincoln Town Car. You know, Freddie's got the old Lincoln Town Car. There's an old Lincoln Town Car still sitting at her house, but another elderly couple lives there. And I said, I wonder if that's Vestal's, and there's a coconut cake in the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> but what an amazing, uh, mm. gospel music has meant a lot to a lot of people, and it's so important. Y'all are trying to keep it alive, and you're really working hard to mm -hmm. make sure that the next generation understands right. that often the words in a gospel music will come for you like nobody else can. Exactly. You can't go to a yeah. psychiatrist that you're going to get as much out of. You can't even talk to a preacher that you're going to get as much out of. Right. Something in a exactly. song sometimes will just touch somebody. Right. And it will change your mood. It will change your spirits. Now, the song that y'all sing that's Freddie's anthem lifts your spirits. And, and that, yeah. you know, when you play that, you just you feel like you lift it up. Yeah. So that's what gospel music is about. Yep. It either right. calms you and right. soothes you comforts and comforts you, you mm -hmm. or it lifts you up. And yeah. I think that's so important. And, and it's so important to carry this on. Now, will Jan carry on the program on WATC without him? Uh, they're no longer on the, on the okay. program. Okay, yeah, okay. They, they discontinued the program. Um, it was on a couple of years, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 
Yeah, and it was so but cool. You can go yeah. back. You can go on YouTube and, and see you all of them. See. They've got them uh -huh. all. Archives, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. And you can watch all the time. And we're program number 13. Lucky number thir 13. Lucky 13, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, today y'all brought a DVD that we're going to share. My nose is itching. Is somebody strange coming? I don't know. Mm. No, let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what it is. I know what it is. I had to go babysit the cats this morning. That's exactly why. <laughs> I went to see the cats this morning. Miss Vicky is in Florida taking uh. care of her son, and I went to take care of the kitty cats. And the kitty cats yesterday were totally confused, and one ate at one spot, and one ate at the other spot. They didn't know whether they were coming or going. And then the one that always goes outside wouldn't go outside because there was a dump truck out in the road, and he's scared of dump trucks. It was so funny. And then this morning I walked in, and they were kind of back to routine. Mizzy ate where she was supposed to eat, Scrappy ate where he was supposed to eat, and Scrappy was rubbing around my leg and trying to be friends and wanting me to pet him, and that's why my nose is itching, so, <laughs> so that's it. Okay, but, okay. but you know, um, when, when we look at what is going on in the world and the sadness and the prayers that are going up for the people in Dayton and in El Paso, we have to find hope that those people have gone to be with the Lord. You know, I, I looked this morning and mm. they said the oldest person was 90 years old that passed and the youngest was 15. Mm. And, and they keep mm. showing the story over and over about the mom and dad who lay on their two month old oh, baby okay. to protect yeah. the baby. Injured the baby oh, you know, yeah. from, from the weight. Yeah, yeah, but, oh, yeah. No. And, and you just think about <laughs> that. And they had, I think, two other children. So other children were left without parents but, oh man, we've got to find some hope in this that we will come together as a nation, that they will, we will pray more, we will do whatever we can to help other people because this is a time of waking up America. Yep. You talk about waking up America. 9-11 was a wake-up call, but we went back yes. to sleep. Yes, exactly. We went back to sleep exactly. and we've gotten lulled into a sense of... Uh, well, everything's, you know, as it and was. And it's not. Yeah, right. It's not. We've well, be and, and about you it. know, mental health is a true crisis. And, and this morning I was listening to all the red flags about the young man in yeah. Dayton. I mean, it was amazing? like red flag after red flag after red flag. And you're like, why didn't somebody stop this? Why didn't somebody report this? Mm -hmm. Why didn't, you know, I know people who have been turned in to defects for really nothing. And then I know other people who get by with murder, Absolutely. and you're like, how does this that. happen? Somebody yes. drops the ball. Right. Somebody drops the ball. But mental health in America, these, the, the three people who have committed these crimes, all young men in their 20s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's something going on. There's right. something going on. You know, is it the violence in the video games? Back to the, to the family, back to the home, you know, um, lack of discipline, lack of respect for authority. And you know, you know the you know the, the violence in the video, you know, desensitizing oh, people, yeah. you know, yeah. to, um, to to human life, and uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in our devotional this morning yeah. about um, where did where did this evil come from? You know, what's what's the solution? Yeah. yeah. Well, and and is it true that <coughs> the young man in Sorry. Dayton was an atheist and who yeah. worshipped Satan? Okay. That's what I've read. That's There's, your I've read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's your answer. There's mm -hmm. your um, answer. I. I don't get it. I don't understand. I, I, you know, we think about my life could end today, your life could end today, but we know where we're going. There's mm -hmm. no doubt in mm -hmm. our mind we know where we're going. We don't want to go there yet because you want to see Lee and Andrea have children, and you want to be able to rock the baby like I get to mm -hmm. do. There are things that we don't want to give up here in this world, yes. but we know where we're going, and we know where we're going is better. When that young man died, yeah, no hope. That's right. No hope. Exactly. No hope. And, uh, and that is that is so sad. And and I'm so confused that he took his sister with him and left his parents, both children dead. I don't understand that. Even if he and and they said he kinda had a little bit of a um um Maybe his sister was better than he was. Maybe his sister was smarter than he mm. was. Maybe his sister mm. was sibling rivalry. was honored a little bit more than he mm -hmm. was. Yeah, and and so maybe he I don't know, but they rode there together to this event place whatever, and then he wiped out his sister. I mean, it just it hurts your mm. heart because you think about. I know what it's like for a deputy to knock on your door and tell you your child is dead. I've been there. I used yes, to do that. you've done it I've as done a deputy. It. Yes. You've done that, and mm -hmm. you know the gut wrenching 
your heart goes away, your soul is just, you, you can't accept it, you can't believe it, but to believe that both your children are gone and one at the hand of the other one, I mean, mm. that just, mm. I, I, I feel so bad for his parents. I feel so bad for his parents and, and I know nothing about his parents. I've never shown pictures of them. I don't know if he was a, you know, they said he was a troubled kid and that when he was like 17 years old, he did some bad things in school. Oh, yeah. He was reported, yeah. the police went out and investigated, but they said, well, he's a juvenile, we're not gonna press charges, mm. yada, yada. And, and it looks like somebody dropped the ball that, you know, counselors, teachers, they see things that are happening with kids and, and somebody needs to really, what is that, see something, say something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got to start doing that. That's, That's so what the very, very... The president talking about the red flag, you know, yeah. when something, you know, um, something like that, um, they, they exhibit um, evidence of uh, mental problems or, or, you know, isolation. That That's what's happened with, with the young people today. They're, they're seeking recognition, and they do it through, like, the social media and everything, and, and there's this narcissistic, you know, uh, um, and if... And if um, and so, if they can't be famous, they want right. to be infamous, right? Just so they make, just so they leave, just so they make a mark, right? Right. And, um, and they also talked about the fact that this is obviously suicide, because mm -hmm. you know, if you're shooting a bunch of people, somebody's going to shoot you. Yep. And I heard this morning. We didn't even hear this, but did, did you know that it was uh, it was at a bar? But it was like a, it was like a a, a police where a lot of police went. It was uh, like wow. a blue lives matter. So it does almost sound like yes. suicide. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then the El Paso was exactly the opposite. Six minutes. Now, as a, as a former deputy sheriff, you know how many gun fires you can get off in six minutes. Oh, you could kill half of Forsyth County. Oh, my goodness, yes. You could kill half yep. of Forsyth County in six minutes. And so in six minutes, there was failure there because he got in his car and left, and they caught him after the fact. Mm -hmm. Had he stayed in that store, he could have killed many, many more. So we don't know what there. his mindset is. Three yeah. thousand people there. Yeah, we we know that he has issues, he has problems, and and you know, God rest all their souls and and the survivors. The survivors will never get over this moment, this day. Mm -hmm. They will carry the sound forever, the sights forever, Survivor's you know. Survivor's guilt a lot of times sets yes, in, yes, yeah, why yep. me, why was I left, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and there were instances where like a husband was in one part of the store, a wife was in the other part of the store, one or the other got killed. And then you're like, why weren't we together, you know, so you just, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of, a lot to deal with for many, many years to come, many years to come. But <clears throat> at the same time, there were multiple deaths in Chicago over the weekend, okay. multiple murders in Chicago, and multiple shootings in Chicago. Not a word. 47. Not a word. Mm -hmm. Not a word said. Nobody on the news said anything because it wasn't one person doing this. It was multiple drug deals, gangs, mm -hmm. um, violence, robberies, all these things. Didn't fit the template that no, the media wants to use. No, exactly. Notice how much they talk about El Paso, <clears throat> but very little about the Dayton. Dayton they're they're yeah. still trying to determine the motive, by the way. <coughs> exactly. The Dayton, the Dayton shooter, yeah. Yeah. They're trying to determine the yeah, motive. Yeah. But they knew right away in El Paso what his yeah, motive was. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Well, we we have seen heartache over the weekend, and, and you know the garlic festival. You know we've done outdoor festivals. Y'all have sung at outdoor festivals. Everybody's happy, you take your children, you picnic, you eat, you enjoy the day. Who thought about that? Who, who, why did he do that? Just, and yeah. I don't even know enough about that shooter. Did they kill him or not? I don't even remember. I, I tried to just kind of put it out I in don't my head. Remember but, but it was like within 10 mm -hmm. days ago, you know, 10 days ago, we've had three shootings, all of them young men and young white men in their, in their 20s, and they have eliminated all these people there is no, when I pump gas now, I'm funny because I'm mm. looking around mm -hmm. me, you oh, know, because to. you don't know. Have People to. will yep. kill you for your car. They'll jerk your pocketbook out of your hands, and you know I'm old and, and <laughs> I can't run fast. So I'm, while I'm pumping gas, I'm looking all around me. Mm -hmm. That's not a world That's I wild. grew up in. Wild. Yeah, right. it's not a world we grew up right. in. Right. Now, when you were a deputy sheriff in Forsyth County, the county was about a third as big as it is oh, today? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> or a fourth? Well, I think our population is around 16,000, 
Now it's over 200,000. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah so. 12 times more. Yes, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Travis, have you <clears throat> seen things change mm. with violence and with things like that happening in Forsyth oh, County? My. Oh, yes, yes. Um, we, um, with, you know, with, with the population growth and, and all the diversity that's come into our county now, and, and um, we're, we're, you know, close to Atlanta, so we're mm -hmm. sort of like a suburb where they can come and do something and, and you know from it you know and, and escape but we've we've got a good sheriff's department we've mm -hmm. got uh, we've got a, a good department now and um, um, if you don't want to do the time don't do the crime in Forsyth County that's they'll, right they'll come they'll, they'll get their man yeah, <laughs> yeah sure that's will. good well um, was it Donald Puckle was sheriff for a long time yes, over there I was under Donald Furkle yeah, and yeah. Wesley Walraven yeah yeah mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. both of them and right. it was a very small operation because that's all you needed oh, you know? yes and you had each other's back and you took care of things. And, and the most, most exciting thing I ever remember in Forsyth County, and it wasn't really exciting, was when Hosea came and brought the march. Yeah. Do you work that Saturday? <laughs> no, no I, I wasn't working then, no. <laughs> but that was <laughs> like, we made worldwide news, right, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> it his, was crazy. My dad, my dad worked it, yeah. He was a volunteer with the Sheriff's Department, yeah. And he worked mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd left the department after then. That was 1980, something 88 or something mm -hmm. like that. Like. And you ended up going to General Motors. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. a career there until mm -hmm. that ended. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of changes. Uh, you've seen some good. You've seen some bad. You've seen some ugly. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, what we just witnessed can really make things better if we do come together and we do decide that we need to get prayer back in schools, we need to oh, yeah. teach the Bible again, exactly. we need yep. to honor thy father and mother, we need to live the Ten Commandments, and we need to take care of your neighbor. Do you remember when we used to take care of our neighbors and you checked on them? If oh. you made soup, you took it two doors down to your neighbor. If you made a cake, you thought, well, so-and-so would like a little bit of this. We don't do that anymore. Thank you, Alicia. She had the uh, devotion with WMU, didn't y'all? Got something when that was some of the topic about the, the uh, community, the loss of community Sense today. Of community. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. We were talking about in church to mentor our children in church mm -hmm. because now um, a lot of churches don't have Sunday school anymore, or if they do have Sunday school, parents don't get there for Sunday school. Mm -hmm. and that was the time that we were close to the older ladies in the church mm -hmm. who were teaching Sunday school. That's mm -hmm. when we learned the little songs like mm -hmm. um, Let Your Light Shine, different little songs. This little light of mine. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And just basically that was your training time to mm -hmm. learn about the church and what to do in the church. And, and the same thing that you're talking about, a sense of community. The younger people knew the older people in the community mm -hmm. because everybody was out. They would sit on their porch and talk. And right, right. So you were out with them. And now people stay in their homes when they're at home. Mm -hmm. They don't get out and talk to their neighbors and do things like that. So children are not learning um, who their elders are. They're mm -hmm. not, they don't know the names of their neighbors. They're not out playing in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not... Um, it's not the way we grew up, and I think it's sad. It is sad. I can remember a circle, and all these ladies wore aprons. There was a circle of ladies out by a tree where my grandmother lived in Atlanta. And the um, produce man would come around once a week. And so all the ladies would gather out there early with their little chairs and their little tote bags. And when he would come, and it was Miss Parker and Miss Jones and different women, who would sit around there with my grandmother and they would all solve the world's problems. <laughs> and if we could gather those women yeah, together again right. today, right. we would not have near the problems that we do because exactly. my grandmother would balance the budget. <laughs> and then Miss Parker would whip their tails because I can remember she popped mine a few times when I got out of line as a little girl. And, and I can remember those women, I can see their faces today. And they made such an impression on me and they were my grandmother's circle of friends. And that circle of friends um, gathered together, they talked, they shared. Um, my grandmother was the only one that had an invalid husband. Everybody else was either a widow or their husbands were still working. And, and my grandmother was the one that was taking care of my grandfather. And, and the ladies would say, Lori, is there anything we can do to help you? And they truly meant that. They meant that. Is there anything we can do to help you? 
and and we don't hear that anymore mm. you know we don't see that reached out hand for that widow who's there 24 7 um, alone or that woman who's there taking care of her invalid husband who doesn't have a car doesn't have transportation we don't see people reaching out and we should we should we should be mm. ashamed so I remember when you would sit under the tree outside and uh, shell peas. Oh yeah, green, green beans, bright green beans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good old yeah. days. The world's yeah. problems the were solved. Would walk across, the neighbor would walk across, sit down, and get a pan and help you. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, it's just a different time. People it have is. different habits and ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, There's a song we sing that the lyrics are just perfect for this. It says, says I recall when the neighborhood was filled with brotherhood, and a stranger <laughs> would shake your hand and give a friendly smile. I recall when the children prayed to begin the classroom day, and it seemed we had more time to just sit and talk a while. Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, <clears throat> I was thinking about with, with my grandmother, because um, she didn't drive, she never drove in her life, and um, she was the breadwinner after my grandfather lost his, um, he was a deputy sheriff in Hall County, but because he came down with MS, he couldn't work. And there was no such thing as SSI. There was no such thing as welfare. There weren't food stamps, but there was commodities food. And mm. you know what commodities food is? And commodities food is one of those things that um, he would get, um, they would get powdered milk and cheese and canned chicken and different things that came in a box once a month. And it was like, oh my gosh, my grandmother had hit the lottery because she got a bag of rice and she got dried beans and she got all these things and she appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Now you give people an EBT card and they can go to Walmart or wherever and they can buy standing rib roast, they can buy <laughs> filet mignon, right. they can buy shrimp, yeah. they can buy whatever they want to right. and their money will be gone in 10 days. And mm -hmm. then they'll be mm -hmm. at the food pantries trying to get help instead of organizing, instead of budgeting, and instead of, take, instead of taking care of right. things. Being wise. We need those old ladies to come back and Managers, circle around. Yeah. We yeah. need the old yeah. ladies to come and circle around, and, and let's teach these young kids. That's a Bible principle. Yeah. Remove not the old landmarks. The, one, you know, the, the, way, the younger you know, women. Uh -huh. that's, that's right. That's a biblical principle. So. Exactly. Well, we you know, to get back to get it. the presidential candidate wants to get everybody a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, well, to that? sit at yeah. home on the couch. Yes. What incentive is that to, to try to rise above? Oh my goodness. What incentive is that? You're going oh to be giving goodness. everything. Well, and and I I'll probably get kicked off Facebook, <laughs> but I, I've got to the don't care stage of my age. I told somebody the other day how old I was, and they said you are not that old. I said, oh yeah, I am, and I'm I'm wearing it well because I'm like living my dream. I'm saying what I think, and 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 I honestly I think about. Um, we need to be accountable and somebody was whining about I was one of the candidates and she said well you have to work two jobs to make it in America today and I sent her a message and I said look which I work three jobs and I said I work three jobs by choice because I'm trying to better myself I don't work three jobs because somebody told me I had to I work three jobs because when I was 14 years old I was going to school, I was working, and then I decided, well, I can work another job. So I'm going to school and I have two jobs. So to me, that was three jobs. And all my life, I've lived that, okay, I'm doing this and I'm doing well. Let's do this and add it to it. Let's add to it. We don't get that anymore. It's like people work their 40 and they're done. Mm -hmm. And they go home and, th and then they whine. Well, if I had more money or if I could do this or if I could, well, if you'd work you another job, you could. I'm not working three jobs because I want to. I'm doing it to better myself. And when this presidential candidate was whining about people having to work two jobs, I'm like, no, you do it by choice. Mm. My little Nick is working two and three jobs because he learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> he learned from the best. And, and, and he didn't go to college because he wasn't college material. Mm. He was done with school. He was just done with school. But he is a hands-on person. He is a great plumber. He is great at heating and air. He's, he's good at mechanicking. He does the things that are necessary. You know like yourself that. as a preacher, you're not going to be a plumber. No, That's not no, going to be your thing. No, but we see something that we can do well at, and then we do well at that, and then we say, well, we could do well at this too. And so you add to your list of accomplishments. And when this presidential candidate was screaming that, oh, in America you have to work two jobs and I'm like well if you amount to anything you ought to want to work two jobs you know but it's just it's a different society it's not at all 
like like I learned from my grandmother and my mother and, and thank God for teachers. I had amazing teachers. Mm -hmm. I had an amazing counselor. You know, I just, I look at the people who sat me down and talked to me and said, look, I know you're bored. I can see it in your eyes. You need to stay busy or you're going to get in trouble. I said, you're right. I'd been playing basketball, I hurt my knee, couldn't play basketball anymore. And, and my counselor said, we got to get you something to do or you're going to end up in trouble. And she was so right. I had to stay busy because some people have to stay busy or they get in trouble. But why not stay busy being productive? You know, right. why not stay busy mm -hmm. being productive? Why sit and do the video games that, that drive, you know, whatever? Um, now, Nick did play video games, but he played the NASCAR one so he could learn to drive better. So, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. So, yes. But, but we, we're at a point in, in our world that the old people need to gather around the trees again. And we, oh, need, right. to, we need to welcome the kids in, and, and we need to talk to them, and we need to sing to them, and we, yeah. need, to, we need to share with them. Bridge that generation gap. We've That's got right. to. We've got and, to. And music's a good way. Yeah, you know, yeah. About. Well, when we look at these two young men... I hope that there will be a time that somebody analyzes their life. And I don't know where it went wrong. You can't blame the parents, because if you could, you could blame me for my kids and all their mistakes. But, but, but I hope that there will be somebody who says, oh my goodness, we dropped the ball and we need to, we need to help these kids. So, yeah. And sadly, one of them is past and one of them is here. And, and the one that's here is facing, facing the death penalty and I do agree with the death penalty, and I agree that he should pay the ultimate price. And um, that means one more death. And so, you know, he, he knew the odds when he did this. I don't know why he did it. I don't understand it. But I hope that someday somebody reaches out and stops another kid from doing this. You know, I hope that there's, I hope that there's somebody that will be impacted enough that they will say, we are responsible, we need to reach out to these kids. We've got to, right. we've got to. Right. Now you've got a message and we've got some commercials we need to okay. take care of. Okay. So we're gonna do a commercial break and when we come back, your message today is about? Well, what we've been talking about, the, the, the root, the cause of, of violence, and then the cure. There you go, yeah. there you go. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes, y'all. Okay, right. here we go, guys. We are back, and, and Brother Travis is going to deliver a message now. And uh, you want to you want to go with it because I think today everybody needs to tune into a positive message and, and find out what we can do to stop stop the hurting, start stop the evil. Well, let's look at the roots of it first. You know, um, uh, I was watching the interview or, or the or the press announcement from the El Paso shooting, and um, the mayor made a statement. I thought it was very good. One of the questions was, well well, what are you going to do about this? And he said, well, I don't have a textbook dealing with evil other than the Bible. And I thought that exactly right. That's, and, and I'm sure that went over well with the media to mm -hmm. hear about that. But, uh, but that is the answer. And we're not going to find a solution unless we're willing to face the answer to the problem. And so, you know, after these shootings, then starts the blame game. We've talked about it this morning. You know, the renewed calls for gun control, gun confiscation even, uh, even blaming the president for his public statements about it. But what's the real cause of the shooters? Uh, the real cause of the shootings are the shooters. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't the gun didn't kill the people. It was the people behind the gun. That was just an instrument that they used. That was just a, a tool that they used. You know, the first person born into the world became a murderer. Yes. The first person in the world uh, that was born became a murderer. Uh, the first murder uh, could not be blamed on social media, the environment. You know, Adam and Eve, they lived in a perfect environment, had a perfect home life. They had two children, and one of them turned out to be a murderer. What was the cause of that? It can't be that they couldn't claim as a dysfunctional family or even political positions that they took of the day. The cause then and the cause now was sin, sin in the heart. Cain was the first child of a sinner, Adam. The Bible says, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. So what we saw is just the ultimate example of what sin left unchecked will eventually lead to, and that it's sometimes it's physical death, but it's ultimately spiritual death. And so this, this was the very cause of it. Sin, then after, after, after Cain slew his brother Abel, we see that uh, sin began to, 
to, to ravage the, the world of that time. And it continued until uh, God looked upon the world and saw that the world was full of violence. Notice what it says. We saw the full manifestation of what sin had brought upon the creation. So in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 11 it says, The earth also was corrupt. The word corrupt means it was decaying and spoiling. It said it was corrupt before God and the earth was filled or was widespread violence all over the world. Then in verse, six, verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And so God washed away the innocent blood with the flood. And he sent that uh, and, and began again with Noah and his family. But the, what was not washed away was the inherent sin in the heart of man. And there had to be something that was going to have to take care of that inner problem of man before they would be able to resolve the, the, the problems that, that they were going through. The same kind of thing is fast becoming accepted in our modern world today. Uh, old moral standards and religious restraints have been cast contemptuously aside. Corruption stalks everywhere with its head lifted high. The sins that produce the flood have risen again in the world and are fast reaching toward heaven. When it said it had come up before God, it was just like a cup that was filling up. And when that cup got to that certain level, God said, I will move in judgment. How far away are we in this world, particularly in this nation, from the cup of iniquity being full and God having to move on judgment? Well, I say that God has already moved in judgment against our nation in many ways. We see... We see the, the things that are happening, and like we call natural disasters and things like that, and, and, and things that we happen in the world today. I believe we probably, God is, is removing the, the restraint. He's removing the uh, protection that he that he'd had over us. We saw how our nation was attacked at 9-11 and, 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 and so forth. And so, but you know, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So when we see we see this, um, this uh, like these examples of this uh, uh, over the past weekend of these violent attacks, and we see uh, all this happening in the world, and and all the bloodshed, and all the corruption, and all the evil and wickedness today. We see that in the world. Just know that we're getting closer to the end of time, closer to the time when Christ is going to re uh, return, because it says, as it was in, in the day of Noah, and it said, in those days they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving and wives. In other words, they were just going about their business. Uh, really uh, not concerned about the signs of the times, just a lot of apathy and, and, and ignorance about what was happening around them. But yet, and then they knew not till the flood came and took them all away. You know, the, the Lord's going to return in such a manner as that. He's going he's to return at such a time as man thinks not. But listen, those, those, when we see the conditions then and we see them now, those murders did not come from their hand on a trigger, but they come from their heart. Jesus says in Matthew 15, 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemy. So all these things. Then in Galatians chapter 5, it gives a list of the works of the flesh, and among those are hatred, variance, and murders is listed as well. You know, I, 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 would you explain to me what a hate crime is? Do you know of anybody that does, commits a crime out of love? Would anybody steal something from you because they loved you no. or, 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 or hurt you because evil. they loved you? Evil. 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 The, the evil. idea of hate crimes, um, it, it's, just, it's just, again, man's attempt to try to, to try to understand and try to make sense of, of these things that's happening. You know, but we ask, we ask, how could people be so ruthless and heartless to kill innocent people? You know, the Bible speaks of those in the last days as being without natural affection, and it says, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which means uncontrolled, and fierce, meaning haters or despisers of those that are good. You know, God has placed <clears throat> restraint on evil in the world, and he does that through the church. We are to be the salt <coughs> and the light. We're to preserve and we're to, uh, uh, to prepare people and, and to point the way to the truth, to the answer today, to the, to the true light, Jesus Christ. But listen, uh, when the church loses its salt, when the salt becomes diluted and our light becomes darkened, what's the alternative? We'll see when God has been removed from our schools, our businesses, 
our government, our homes, good is removed as well. So is it any mystery that the fact the devil fills this vacuum and men act the way they do today? Do you take away, uh, you, we take away uh, that which is good, and we've talked about it this morning, about training our children and giving them that, that sense of, of, of responsibility and, and respect for authority. You know, I dare to say these, these young men, uh, they, they, they didn't honor their father and mother. We don't know their home life, but there's, there's, there's some roots. There's something that was planted there somewhere, and it came to full fruition in, this act, in these, these heinous acts of, of murder. But, you know, um, we always ask the question, well, why is there evil in the world? I, I got another question. In view of the state of the heart of man, why is there any good in the world? Mm -hmm. We think about it. Why is there any good? Well, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one, speaking of man. And that goes all the way back to Adam. That's when the seeds of sin were, were planted and it's come to full bloom and blossom today. And it's manifested in many ways. But we see these uncontrolled acts, these, these, these heinous acts of, of no, no being past feeling the Bible talks about without natural affection. Uh, a young man that can just murder his sister like that is the case in, in, in Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And so we see this lack of natural affection uh, and, and just uh, these things happening. But the Bible says there is one good, and that is God. And it said, every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father above, in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. So if we want to see good return to the world, we've got to get God back in to our, back into our schools. We've got it back into our government, back into our homes. We've got, we've got to get uh, the Lord back in his place. And, he, and so we, we would see a change. Oh, what a change we would see. You know, God dealt with evil. What did God do about this evil? What is, what is, see, people say, well, what's God going to do about this? He's already done it, dear friends. He's already dealt with evil by allowing it to come to its full manifestation in the crucifixion of his son, Jesus Christ. He allowed evil to have its day. He allowed evil to, to come and to take the most innocent person that ever lived and to, to have him crucified upon the cross and die, not for his own sins, but for the sin of Adam and for Bob and George and Mary and Alice, every man, woman, boy and girl, Jesus died for our sins upon that cross. He dealt with evil at that time. And if we will receive that gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, then our heart will change, and then there will be no place for the hatred, for the, for the, for the variance, for the fierceness, for the uncontrolled uh, wickedness we see today. And so that's, that is God's answer to it. So you see, you know, I believe that there's some people that, that have problems mentally, and they should not have, they should not have guns. Mm -hmm. I believe we should restrict people that is having problems like that, should not have guns, and also believe like convicted felons of a violent crime, should not because they've shown a propensity to be violent. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the, the, uh, the real answer <clears throat> is not gun control, but self-control. And it's not political, but spiritual. That's what we're dealing with today, is a spiritual problem. And until we recognize that, we'll continue to see more bloodshed more blood in our street. We'll see more. Oh, listen, uh, one of, the, one of the, the most heinous crimes today is abortion with all the little innocent babies that's dying every day. But we don't see the headlines about that. But God sees it. Mm -hmm. God sees it. And God has the answer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God allowed his son to be murdered that we might have eternal life. Maybe you're here today watching and, and you're perplexed about what's happening. Just stop and think. The Bible says that if you hate your neighbor without a cause, you too are a murderer because it comes from the heart. If your heart's not been changed, let me ask you to do this. Just bow your head and say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell, but I believe Jesus died for me. He died for my sins upon the cross, and I trust him now as my Savior. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Okay, we're going to go now to some music by the Bridgemans because I'm looking at the clock and we've got a couple of songs we want to share. These were done 
um, Jerry. Jerry and Jan Goff. It was called Enjoying Life with Jerry and Jan. And they were enjoying life. Yes. Oh, 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 every oh, single yes, moment. Yes, yeah, yes. Every single moment. Yes. So, and, and when we think about um, what she has now to remember, that beautiful letter that he wrote her, yes. I can only imagine the words in that letter. <laughs> oh, my. Because when you he saw so them, in his you saw yes. that joy and that love. And so I know that, <laughs> I know that she, is, she is fine. She's going to be fine. Yeah. Because she knows how, how grand, how, how much he loved her. Yes, and all the support she gets from those who have so many friends. Mm -hmm. And it's just Absolutely. such an outpouring of support. Okay, for her here we go time. to the Bridgmans. What songs are on here? I'm happy in my soul. Yay! <laughs> and if not today. <laughs> there you go. We'll be back shortly, guys. Okay. Uh -huh. Brother and Sister Bridgman, or Reverend and Mrs. Uh, Bridgman, we're glad to have Travis and Alicia. I call them and Travis they're singing and with us, I'm Happy in My Soul. Here is Brother Travis and Sister Alicia. coming again, if not today, then maybe tomorrow. If not today, if not today then maybe tomorrow, heaven will open, heaven will open. Jesus will come.
Oh, that was good that singing, was good. wasn't it, Angel? You know, I wanted to kind of lead, you know, those kind of songs. You remember how we used to learn to lead, you know? How precious, how precious, how precious to be able to see him. And, and y'all, if you're looking to um, look at Dr. Jerry Goff's messages, you can go. Did you say WATC has them all downloaded? Yes, on their, on the YouTube you go to ATC on YouTube, and you can like search out Enjoying Life. There you go. Episode you number go. 13. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Bridgens. Now, if people are watching and would like to book y'all to come to their church and sing. Yes. Uh, and or to, I know y'all love to go to places like Cameron Hall. You just yeah. went to Albertville, Alabama and mm -hmm. did a singing over there. Yes. Y'all like um, traveling a little bit. Not yes. too far from home. Right, but, you right. Know, so a little get bit. back by Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thebridgemans.com is our website. And we're going to be this Saturday night, if you're around Gillsville, Georgia, they're going to have a redback singing uh, at uh, Gillsville Baptist Church in Gillsville. And there's going to be uh, a lot of, lot of groups there. are going to have a mass choir. And we'll, we'll be singing along with that. And uh, come out and uh, be with us at, this, this Saturday at 6 p.m. at Gillsville Baptist Church. And Charlie Sexton. Charlie Sexton. Uh, Linda Foster will be there. The Saxon and family. That means two <laughs> piano players are going to be there. We could have dueling pianos That's, because you and well, Charlie. <laughs> well, Diane, Diane Sachs. Okay, yes, there you go. She's a great so you pianist. Have three. Yes. There you mm -hmm. go. And um, um, off the top of my head, I see who else is there. Um, just, just a lot. And <laughs> again, to find yeah. out, they can go to your Facebook page and get all the information, yeah, oh, yes. directions. Right. So sure, it's on there. the Bridgman's mm -hmm. on Facebook, and you can watch. Now, do y'all archive your messages from Antioch? Do you do that? Do you uh, have a way that people can go back and see messages? Well, well, we don't video. We would have audio. Okay. We, do, we do recorded audio messages. Yes. And what about like revival? Did y'all do any videos of revival? Not video, just just no. audio. Well, yeah. You're gonna have to step well, it up okay. and notch. <laughs> 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 Get one of these good <laughs> technicians to come join our church yeah, there and yeah. <laughs> do that for us. Yeah. Actually, it blows my mind at how well you can do and thankful for Facebook and live because I'm seeing so many That's churches. Great, I great know great tool. It is. Salem number two up in an area where I didn't even think they had Wi-Fi. They are now going live with their church service. And it's on Facebook, and I'm like, that is oh, so cool. So it's it's really changing, attend, yes, and right. it's reaching people who are like, oh, I used to go to that church, but I moved away. Now I can watch them again. So, and y'all are dealing with the same thing because transition changes, people move away, they go to live with their children. You've got church members who don't live in your area oh, anymore. Yeah. So if yeah. you could get it on Facebook, that would be a nice that, way to that share. That would be good. There you go. Well, to, there you go. Now, what's that? Lee and Miss Andrea up to? <laughs> Well. well, they're working, <laughs> uh, they work hard, they mm. work a lot, but they're uh, happy and things well. are going well for them. Yeah. We're excited. Yeah, and they have a kitty cat too, don't they? Oh, they oh, do, yes. They babysit yes. a cat. And a, <laughs> yes. Oh, and a, I'm not throwing cats they have a, a, a hermit crab cat. too. Yes, yes. <laughs> a hermit crab. They, <laughs> they went to Myrtle Beach in um, April. And they brought a hermit crab back. Angela had and one of those. And still alive. She loved it. And that, she loved that thing. Still alive I didn't somehow. think it would live one week. <laughs> and they, it is still alive oh, and still funny. moving around in its tank. And um, uh, Lee has researched how to keep it alive and look well, after it. We've got a grand cat so. and a grand crab. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe one day you'll have one of them little rocking, that, screaming there ones. There you yeah. go. That's right. I, I did. Billing. I got so tickled at Riker last night because if you are out of the room, he does not do well with that. He wants you looking right at his. And boy, you talk about blood curdling screams. So I said, if the if the horror movies ever come back to the scream, and they want somebody that really can scream, Riker can scream. <laughs> he got mad when his nanny went in the bathroom and the door was shut and he couldn't get to me. Oh my goodness gracious! He may be a high tenor. <laughs> oh yeah, Archie Watkins, you better watch out. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, y'all, yeah. thanks for being with us today. Oh, we enjoyed um, it. Right. You know, we are very blessed to live in a country where we can talk about the Lord. We can ask you to pray yeah. for your neighbor. And please don't forget the Bob Thomas family here in LJ. What an amazing man. What an amazing impact he made on our tiny town. What an amazing um, joy to know that he has gone to be with the Lord. And um, certainly he has. Right. And, and his family's going to miss him. But um, would he come back today? I probably think not. I probably hmm. think not. So we're going to see you again soon, only on ETC. Don't forget the Bridgemans. You can reach them on Facebook, or you can pick up the phone and call them, or you can visit them at Antioch Baptist Church 
very easy to find over in Forsyth County, and it's about a 32-minute drive from Ball Ground if you don't get behind them other slow church goers. <laughs> <laughs> and trucks. Yeah, and trucks. that's right. We'll see you again soon, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.